الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر وأنهى وإنما تعلمون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين All the praise due to Allah we praise him and we seek his assistance and guidance and forgiveness from so ever Allah guides there is no one could misguide and whomsoever Allah misguides, there is no one could guide. And I testify that there is no God but Allah, and I further testify that Muhammad is a servant and messenger. We ask you, O oh Allah, to send you peace and your blessing upon the messenger, as well as his household and companions, like you sent upon Prophet Abraham and his household and companions. To proceed, dear brothers and sisters, it was reported in Sahih al-Bukhari on the authority of Umar ibn Khattab that <clears throat> there was a woman whose son was missing, a little son was missing. And she went looking for him, she went out looking for him. As soon as she found him, she took him towards her and she hugged him so hard and she was so happy to be reunited with her son. And then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu made a comment on this to his companions and he said, would you imagine that this woman would even think of throwing her son in the hellfire? Would you imagine that this woman could, would in any way, in one way or another, throw her son in the hellfire? So of course they all said no. There's no way that she would do that. Then, then the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Allah is more merciful to his servant than this woman to her son. As Allah, Allah is more merciful to his servant than this woman 
to her son. Dear brothers, in this hadith is the Bukhari, and it's also narrated in other books of hadith. Dear brothers and sisters, two things that Muslims and non-Muslims alike, they tend to overlook, uh, either intentionally or unintentionally, they tend to <clears throat> bypass, they tend to not fully comprehend the severity of ignoring these two facts. The fact that this worldly life is a test. Like it if you like it, hate it if you hate it. This is a test. As far as our faith goes, we were brought here to be tested. This is the fact. Some people may acknowledge this fact. Some people may believe in this fact. Some people may disbelieve in this fact. Some people may disregard this fact. Some people may not even consider it a fact in the first place. Some people may mock and make fun of this fact. To us, it will remain to be a fact. Nothing will change that. So, the trials and the tests, we believe that everyone will be tested and tried one way or another. The severity and the seriousness of this test varies from one person to another. We don't know the measures by which, how hard the test will be for each individual. Some people may be tested hard, some people may not test as hard as other people do. But everyone will be tested. This is something that we know. It says it clearly in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in fi ayatin, ha, wa in kunna la We will test you. We will test you. Alif la mim ahasib al nasu an yutraku an yakulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun wa la qat fatanna al ladina min qablihim la yalamanna allahu al ladina sadaku wa la yalamanna al kadibin. Do people think that they will be left alone without being tested? We surely have tested those generations before them who passed before them. So Allah will make evident. Allah will make evidence of those who are truthful and those who are not. So it is a fact. To us it is a fact, dear brother and sister. Understanding this fact will definitely enlighten a lot of things that you are going through in this life. If you understand the reality of this life. If you understand just one simple and small and short verse in the Quran, in one of the surahs, in the 30th juz that most of our youngsters memorize, Surah Al-Balad, when Allah Azza wa says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ He first he swore, he swore by the land, or the town, or the city, city of what? The holy city, the sacred city of Mecca. لَا أُقْسِمُ بِهَذَا الْبَلَدِ Allah SWT took an oath, and then, what was that? Oath was made for we have created human to labor on in hardship. To labor on in hardship. It's an oath that has been taken. If you understand this, then you will realize, or you will come to an come to answer a lot of questions that pops in someone's mind. Why was I here? Why was I brought to this world? Huh? Why am I suffering? Did God bring me here to suffer? Had I known this from the beginning, I would have told him, no. I'm sorry, I don't want to be suffered. Don't bring me here. But you were not consulted. You were not consulted before you came here, and you were not consulted before you depart here either. The two major events in your life, your opinions would not matter in them. Being brought here and departing here. So understanding this fact, it helps a lot. And again, as we mentioned in the last call of your brothers and sisters, the believers who believe in this fact are the ones who live the life comfortably. Are the ones, when I say live the life comfortably, it doesn't mean that you're comfortable. It means that you understand what's going on, so you will be comfortable with what's going on. And I, I said before this line, if you want to live comfortable, or if you want to be happy, you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. 
Make yourself comfortable being uncomfortable, and everything will be okay. The believer is the one who understands this fact, and so the Prophet ﷺ says, complimenting the believers, and he says, Amazing. Amazing is the status of the believer. It is amazing. All his affairs are good for him. All scenarios are good for him. If something good happens to him, he will be thankful. And that's good for him. If something bad befalls him, he will be patient. And that's also good for him. So everything, in all scenarios, everything. He did not assume the Prophet the Prophet did not assume that nothing had nothing bad will happen. He didn't assume that bad thing will not cause any suffering. But he did indicate that this bad thing is met with patience. With patience. And this patience comes from understanding. Understanding the truth of the matter of this life. And that when the patience generates. And so another fact that the people that the people miss. And again, if you go against this fact then simply, according to our faith, you're going against one of the one of the facts of this existence. And the only person who will suffer is you. Because this fact is not going to change for you. It will remain to be a fact. If you look at the sun and try to convince yourself that this is not the sun, it will remain to be the sun. She's not going to listen to you. And so the Prophet ﷺ compliments the believers for understanding this fact and behaving in accordance to this fact. And another thing, another fact that Allah is the most merciful, like we've mentioned, this is the mercy of Allah, we give that parable of this mercy with the hadith that we mentioned at the beginning of the khutbah, how Allah is more merciful to his servant than this lady to her son. That's also another fact. The fact that Allah puts you in trial does not make him not merciful, God forbid. The fact that He puts you in this hardship doesn't make you not hard. Sometimes the trials and the tribulations are good for you. Sometimes they are punishment, and sometimes they are. Sometimes they are blessings. You may never know. And this wisdom to find out which is which is that what you need to get connection with Allah for to get this wisdom, which is punishment and which is and which is a blessing. Which trial is actually a punishment for something that you have done, and which trial is actually a blessing. Trials are needed, and do not ask for them. Do not ask for Allah to put you in trial. Always ask Allah for pardoning and forgiveness. But if they happen to you, know that something always good will come out of it. Because sometimes, without hardship, there will be no ease. Huh? Without dark clouds, there will be no sunshine and rain next day. All right. With that, if, you know the the silkworm. And I give this example to you many times. The silkworm, when she goes huh, in a cocoon, she runs herself in a cocoon, and then becomes butterfly. It becomes butterfly, right? You know this uh, life cycle of the silkworm. And when she wants to get out of the cocoon, she does what? She peers through to get out. She cannot pierce through a big hole. She has to pierce, she only can pierce through a little tiny hole. Why? To squeeze herself out with her wings and uh, the wings will be strengthened so she can fly. If the hole was too large, she will get out easily, she won't be able to fly. It's the wisdom of Allah that puts you through this hardship so you can continue on the life, so you can bring the best out of you, so you can meet the challenges. A quiet sea, Peaceful sea does not make a good sailor. If the sea is peaceful all the time, you won't be a good sailor. You will learn when the wind hits and the waves strike how to be a skilled and talented sailor. Take this example applied in life. We talked last week about, brothers, if you remember, about mental health. Did we not? As we did. I mentioned to you that there were some cases of concern that are under monitoring, under monitoring by health, mental health officials in our community. And 
talk to you about the importance of making a connection with Allah because the religion is a factor in treating mental health. It's not the only factor, but it is a factor. And that's what I was told by the specialist. Last two days, I told you that last week, last two days, yesterday, we went to perform gospel washing in Berry, Vermont, for a member of a Muslim family who committed a suicide by shooting himself in the head. That was yesterday. Mental health will come again an issue. If you don't understand the reality of this life, this is what you may end up doing to yourself. If you understand the reality of this life, this is what you end up doing to yourself. If you understand that Allah is the most merciful, you will end up doing this to yourself. Look what Allah says. Do not kill yourselves because Allah has always been merciful to you. And this is for those who think that Islam entice violence and killing them. Do not kill yourself because Allah has always been merciful to you. No matter what happened to you, no matter the downfalls that you have in your life, his door is open. Of all doors, if all doors are locked, his door will remain always open. No matter how bad you were, he will never lock his door on you. You do not have to go through a man or through any religious person to knock on his door. It's directly between you and him. It's a call between you and him. We'll open this door or we'll get through this door. Do not do this yourself because he's always been good to you. He's always been merciful to you. The companions, may Allah be pleased with them because they understood this reality. They were cheerful. You know when they were cheerful? When they found out that Allah Himself, God Himself, was the one who will be questioned on the Day of Judgment. He will not appoint anyone to do the question. When they found out that it is God Himself will be the questioner on the Day of Judgment, they were cheerful. They said, if it was someone else, we would worry about it. Because it's the most merciful He would do that. Then we are feeling comfortable. Huh? It, that's not a single day, as it was reported in the authentic hadith, except or the, the, the heavens and earth, the mountains, would ask God for permission or let me collapse on the son of Adam because he ate your provision and was ungrateful to you. The sea will ask Allah for permission, let me swallow the son of Adam because he ate your provision and was ungrateful to you. All those creatures in the creation of Allah will ask for that permission as it was reported in the statement, prophetic statement, and then God responded to them and said, leave them alone. If you created them, you would have been more merciful to them. It is Allah the Creator is the most merciful. You have to understand this fact. And this fact in no way whatsoever, in conflict with the other facts, that the hardship is there. The hardship is there. This has nothing to do with this. The believers understand this reality and the prescription, the remedy, the cure that Allah gives to them through two things Seek help through patience and prayer Seek, seek help through patience and prayer Patience is the art that if you do not master you will suffer What is patience? Huh? What is patience? By definition, I don't know how to define patience. But someone did before. Someone asked one of the legendary characters in the, in the Arab world, Antar ibn Shaddad, one of the, the icons of bravery, the icons of courage of the Arabs. I think a lot of you are familiar with this name, Antar. He was asked, what is patient? He said, I'll tell you what it is. Give me your finger, I'll bite on it. And he's my finger, you bite on it. And they started. In a little bit, the other guy screamed. He said, if you didn't scream, I was about to, but I was patient. Here's the definition in brief. If you didn't scream, I was about to scream, but you did it first. Because I was patient. 
This is patient. Apply it in everything in your life. If you lose that, you will suffer. It is what it is. We didn't make the rules of this world, brothers. Imams don't make rules. Nor does anyone else. The rules are there. And prayer. Through, seek help through patience and prayer. It was reported, Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him, she said, whenever something bothers the Prophet, he would rush immediately towards prayer. Immediately. Anything bothers him, uh, you remember in, in our current time sometimes, when something bothers someone, he goes and he outside and smokes a cigarette. Think about what's going on. Now the Prophet will go and make wudu and pray. That's what he does. This is how he handles difficult situations. When they were sitting down, talking, or doing anything that's important, and the prayer time comes, he would tell Bilal, his wazim, his caller to the prayer, he would tell him, oh, give us a break now. Meaning the prayer, the prayer is break. Now it's time for us to break and pray. The prayer is a spiritual healing, spiritual break. And this is what Allah says in the Quran, huh? إن الإنسان خلق هلوعا إذا مسه الشر جزوعا وإذا مسه الخير منوعا إلا المصلي. The man is created, the human being is created of a panicking nature, of a panicking nature, except those who observe the prayer regularly. Except those who observe the prayer regularly. We ask Allah to make us among the people of the earth. بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أما بعد. So dear brothers and sisters, understanding these facts of this world, these facts of this life is very important. Because I mean, if you go against them, you're going against you're going against yourself. If you challenge them, you're challenging yourself. If you think that you want to harm yourself. To show you know, objection or to rebel, repel against the current condition, you're the only one who's going to be harmed. No one else. You're harming yourself. No one else is harmed. You have to understand that this life is a test. It's not difficult all the time, but difficulties are there. You cannot eliminate them. It's sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's joyful. Sometimes it's cheerful. Sometimes it's enjoyable. Yes. But sometimes it's difficult, sometimes it's hard. You have to understand that these have to go in balance all together, all the time. It is what it is. Well, I don't know. If I, if I have something to change, I would have changed it for myself first. I can't do that. I would have changed it for myself. The Prophet would have changed it for himself. If I knew the unseen, if I knew the future, this is Allah telling His Prophet. If I knew the future, Allah is telling His Prophet to tell us. If I knew the future, I would have picked all the good things and nothing bad would have happened to me. But I don't know the future. I don't know what's, gonna, what's coming next. So you have to be, take life as it comes at you. If it's good, Alhamdulillah, thankful. Be thankful to Allah. If it's not good, be patient and you know that afterwards it will become good again. It's not going to remain like this. You know that cycle, cycle off. It's going to change, inshallah. It not, nothing, nothing lasts forever. Nothing, brothers and sisters, it lasts forever. Remember this. Nothing lasts forever. Everything changes. Of the laws of this universe, that everything changes. So if you have been sad for a long time, it will change. It will change, inshallah. So do not do that to you. If you know anyone who is suffering like this, give them this some word, these words of wisdom. Because, in a good way though. Because sometimes you speak to people in a way that sometimes they may agree with you, but because of the way you're talking to them, they will run away from you. So, in a good way. Call to the path of your Lord using wisdom and gentle advice. So people can listen to you. And that's very important. And it is, we talked yet last week about it, and subhanAllah, this week from last week to this week, we have just had a case that we went to, yes, we, I lost sleep last night because of what I have seen. And Brother Najad was with me yesterday doing the 
preparation for burial. Because of what I've seen, I lost my appetite. I, I, I'm, I'm afraid to eat anything. And hopefully after the prayer I'll eat, inshallah. But it's, it's something serious, brother. Allah is something serious. And if you ever fear someone, feel someone who is going into that direction, speak to him. Speak to him gently and nicely so that he may understand that this is the truth of this life. That he may understand. Speak to him of the blessings of Allah. Speak to, him, speak to him how merciful Allah is. Tell him this verse, do not kill yourself, for God has always been merciful to you. God has always been merciful to you. And the Quran, which is the cure, as we mentioned, it is the cure that Allah has sent down to us. It is a cure when you read it. All those wisdom that I, that I have mentioned, all those words that I have mentioned, I did not bring them on top of my head. Those are what Allah says in His book. I'm just transferring them to you. I'm putting them different. I, I paraphrase them to you. But they're there. Open the Quran with this mentality, and you'll find God speaking to you. And speaking of the Quran, tonight, inshallah, we will finish the recitation of the Quran in Aisha prayer at 8 p.m. Some of you know already, some of you may, some of you may not know that in Fajr and Aisha we recite the Quran in order. In order. And tonight is the time we're going to finish uh, to sort in that, inshallah, in Aisha prayer. After the prayer, we're going to make collective dua as it was the habit and the practice of the companions of the Prophet and our righteous predecessor that they consider this moment a moment that the du'a, inshallah, is answered. So we got to follow the practice of the Quran. ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, one of the companions, but Allah has given a long life. He lived over a hundred years. He used, whenever he finishes the recitation of the Quran, call upon his family and make collective du'a together. And we got to do that, inshallah, tonight. When we finish the Quran, inshallah, and share prayer, I'm calling upon everyone to come and make a, coll a collective du'a, inshallah, together for ourselves, for our families, for our community. By the way, the Prophet made dua from Anas, Anas ibn Malik. For Allah to increase his, his wealth and his children and his, what else? Life span. And he had more than 100 children and grandchildren, mashallah, 100. Three digits. Filled children and grandchildren, and he lived over 100 years. See how important the dua is? So may Allah increase your health and your wealth and your children. I'm not sure if you will go for 400 children or not. Why not? But may Allah increase them, inshallah. And this, inshallah, a moment like this is not happening every day. And spirituality is needed. We are created from, as far as we know, from a fist of, of dust and a blown of spirit. Uh, so we are uh, spirit and material together. So our body has rise upon us and our soul has also rise upon us. So we need this moment of spirituality that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a break and some uh, meditation and some uh, pondering over what's going on in our life. And very important announcement. I'm, not, I'm making the announcement now, brothers, because after the prayer, a lot of you rush outside, don't hear the announcement. So it's important that I make them now. We were contacted by the refugee settlement program that a lot of refugees, Afghan refugees, are coming as soon as tomorrow to Burmuntu. And we just want to know as a community how we can do to help. We don't know how we're going to help them. So uh, I'm going to go, I have a phone call appointment with one of their program managers today, inshallah, just to find out what can we do as a community. A lot of com other faith communities also asking how can they help. So I'm going to just get the word from them and give it to you, inshallah, to tell you. But be on the lookout that we may turn to you, asking you for fundraising or for anything that could, whatever help that we can provide to them, inshallah. We don't know yet, but we, we, we should know soon, inshallah. So I just got the word today. Some of them are arriving tomorrow. The rest of them, we have a total of 100. The rest of them will arrive in two weeks. So they're all arriving in a period of two weeks, starting to one. One of them has already arrived. Two are arriving tomorrow to Burlington Airport, and the rest of them, inshallah, within two weeks. So, 
very soon, inshallah, we're going to turn to you to tell you what we need to do as a community to host those new arrivals, inshallah. And tonight, as we mentioned, we're going to have this gathering together, inshallah, after our share prayer. And I humbly ask you for dua to make dua for me. I'm traveling tomorrow to perform Umrah, inshallah. I also need to take some time off to meditate on a few things that are important to me in my life. So that's why I'm taking this time off and perform Umrah, inshallah. I should be back, inshallah, the next week. I'm leaving tomorrow, inshallah. So please make dua for me. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deeds, accept our worship. Inshallah. Okay, please go. Accept our worship, accept our, 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 our good deeds, and pardon our shortcomings, inshallah. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وصلنا على الطاب الكافرين قوم الله صلاة الله رحمة الله إن صلاة الله عن الفرشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل يا أيها الكافرون لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد ولا أنا عابد ما عبدتم ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد لكم دينكم ولي دين الله سمع الله من حمد الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المنضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إذا جاء ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله سمع الله الله
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم so just as you heard brothers the announcement tonight inshallah we're meeting for Khatr al-Quran and Hashat prayer inshallah followed by a lecture about the miracles of the Quran and very important thing about the time tomorrow inshallah prayer would be at 6 45 Tomorrow, 